anyway, let me get to this message because it's long today. The message is long today. It's the last, it's the last one of the year, so it's long. Amen. Amen. You don't have to amen or clap. It's long. Amen. So we're doing a recap this. Amen. Y'all been praying? So what we're going to do with our prayer, we're going to use a, just, I feel like the Lord is leading me uh, for us not to do it in January, our um, uh, fast. And we're going to wait till we get out of the cold and flu kind of season before we subject our bodies to fasting so that we can keep our immune systems healthy. Now, since we're not fasting, you still got to eat good. Amen. Eat good to keep yourselves up so you don't get sick. You're going to get sick if you don't eat right. That's why folks get sick. The people you see dying now of COVID, they're, they're dying because they've had pre-existing health issues for a very long time. And they weren't paying attention to that. So we're going to pay attention to it. I've been preaching this for a long time. So make sure you do that. So maybe February, maybe March, just depending on how it's looking. And we're just going to kind of gauge it so that we can make sure that we, we can go through that season and keep, keep our strength and keep ourselves healthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. So eat. Look at somebody say, eat right. Eat right. Amen. Don't be trying to load up for the fast. <laughs> Fat Tuesday. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, so I'm going to do kind of a recap. Did I do? Okay, yeah, I'm going to do a recap of just, not a recap, but just kind of a review of 2020. Just kind of some of the things that happened and why they happened so we can just get a good understanding as believers and prepare ourselves for 2021. Amen? Because it's, this is going to be a year of testing of our faith. Our faith will be tested this year. And whether or not you, well, our faith was tested in 2020. Amen? Amen. A whole bunch of folks fell off. They lost the test. Uh, they didn't pass the test, the faith test. And so we're going to have to make sure that we are where we need to be for 2021. Amen. Amen. The first thing I'm going to show you is I got this clip off of, uh, I got this video clip off Instagram. This is off Netflix Instagram page. This was on their page. So I'm discontinuing my Netflix I don't care what come on there. I, it ain't worth this, what they doing. So they went on this, this thing called Zazz Generator, which will allow you to put your name and lights and some music will play. And it, it was, it's just kind of like uh, the movie they got, Prom or something like that, a show called Prom or something. Well, anyway, it'll put your name and lights and different, different things. So Instagram decided to put something in lights on their Instagram page. This is what they put. That's unbelievable. Ain't no show. I don't care what you showing. It ain't worth it for me. If, if, if you that bold, I'm done with you. I ain't got to watch no Netflix. I mean, that was bold. And the crazy thing is, as soon as I got it, Netflix took it off. Why you take it off then? I mean, if you, you proud of it, so they must have known. Folks deleting Netflix now. I see we got their phone out. Oh, they ain't worth that, Jack. They ain't worth that. Give me my five dollars a month back. Is it five dollars? Ten. Oh, where's my phone? Fourteen. Oh, it's got to go. I'm done. I, I, I don't want to see nothing else. Amen. Everything you, every, everything new they coming out with is gay anyway. Why? When did TV get so gay? You can't watch TV anymore. Every commercial, BET, VH1, and MTV, if you watch any of those networks, every commercial, RuPaul is sashing and clapping. Oh, a Ritz commercial. I ain't eating Ritz no more. I'm eating saltines. The Ritz too gay. They got the gayest commercial ever. Don't have nothing to do with a cracker. 
just showing gayness and gayness, and at the end, somebody throw a crack across the screen. I don't want to see that. <laughs> hey, you talk about homosexuality, you don't talk about no other sin. I talk about all sins. Do I talk about all sins in here? Hey, Amen. All sins are sin. Hey, Amen. But we don't see there is no adulterers network. Well, they marching with a flag. Hey, Amen. The, the, the thieves don't have a march downtown. Hey, Amen. They'll plan it, and then when everybody show up, they'll be at your house stealing. <laughs> We waiting on the parade. Where they at? Y'all all getting robbed. <laughs> hey man, you know, ain't no other, nobody else is proud of sin like that and flying in the face of God like that and using God's rainbow. You bold, bro. But it, 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 you think it's coincidental that the Bible said as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And they picked the rainbow as their Symbol? And then right after that in the book of Luke, it says, and just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what the, look at somebody say, that's what the word says. Amen. So I'm going with the word in these last and evil days. Amen. I don't care who get mad about it. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, 2020 hindsight. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash 2020 hindsight dot PDF. 2020, my goodness, this year. Was this year a trip or what? They did everything they could think of to usher in the new world order this year. Amen. Put a mask on everybody knowing that a mask doesn't do anything. Just wanted people in them to make people afraid of what they're saying is out there. When in actuality, what's really out there, they won't let you even make a post about it. If I post anything about 5G, they will pull it down. I thank God I collected all of that data before any of this stuff went down. I did it all in 2019. God knew. So I, I was able to collect all that stuff for part 13. I was able to collect all that data on 5G and all of those things before it went down so that the people of God can understand what's really going on. Amen. This is just an advancement in technology, which definitely takes a toll on us physically. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We are not immune to millimeter waves and electromagnetic waves. Those things affect our health and they compromise our immune system, which in turn causes us to not be able to fight off colds and flus. Amen. And so this is what's happening, but they're trying to make it look like there's something out there. Now you can see it, folks in their cars with masks on, with the windows up. Oh, it might come in here and sit next to me. Gotta lock the doors. Amen. But it's just, you know, that's what's happening. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash 2020 hindsight P D F. Got some questions, five questions. First question, why are people afraid of a flu virus that has less of a death rate than last year's seasonal flu? So before it was called COVID, it was just the flu and nobody was afraid of it. You knew when you got it, you would get better. But it did have a death rate, but it only affected those that had pre-existing health conditions. The, the flu kills millions of people each year if they have pre-existing health conditions. That's why we're trying to watch our health now. Amen? Change a little bit. Amen? One scoop instead of two. Amen? Start and Just start small if you have to. Why are people believing that a vaccine that took a few months to prepare is safe? How can you know it's safe if it only took a few months? It hasn't been tested. You're going to take a vaccine that hasn't been tested? 
HIV virus has killed for 40 years without any hope of a vaccine. Is it the same laboratory? Y'all using the same equipment? Then how can you come up with one for COVID and you can't come up with one for HIV? Aren't they both viruses? I know I'm preaching. Number three, why is the church afraid to meet when they are supposed to have faith? Afraid to meet, and when they do meet, they spaced out with, 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 with mask and social. Why are you social distancing in God's house? You don't want to be next to nobody. You don't want to be next to the saints. Spaced out in the church, and y'all all in there singing. That's some tomfoolery. Somebody crazy. Y'all all in there singing and dancing and everything. And if you're not, something's wrong. You in there still. Oh, I don't want to kick up no droplets. <laughs> then watch it come. Watch it online. Why is the church afraid to meet when they're supposed to have faith? Isn't fellowship with God's people worth the risk? Amen. I mean, if I know healing is in here, if I know deliverance, if I know blessings are in here, but see, folks got that attitude. Oh, well, you know, I get there all at home. Okay, home. Oh, lonely self. Won't he protect us if he commanded us to come together? So God's going to command you to come together, but everybody going to die of COVID if they do. Does that sound like God? He commanded that we come. He told us as the end approaching, even more so we should be coming together. That's what the word said. I'm trying to figure out what Bible these folks reading. Oh, the church age is over. That ain't in my Bible. Ain't no good churches. I'm in one. Look at somebody and say, I'm in a good church. Amen. These folk crazy. How you gonna make a good church into a bad church? You just make it up stuff. Amen. All the social media sites, Facebook, all of them, all of them hit me up trying to take us offline. It's church people trying to take us offline. We're not even fighting witches and warlocks. Well, we are. It's church folks reporting us for meeting. Reporting us for meeting. Take them down. They're not obeying the COVID restrictions. We don't have those COVID restrictions. We've been following the guidelines since we started. We even went outside and had church outside, which turned out to be great. We went outside and had church outside and the cops and the, and the city hall, all of them. Who are these people that keep calling us trying to tell it on y'all? It's not even the world. It's church people trying to stop the church. Why are they trying to stop the church? I be mean, laughing with my preacher friends. They're like, man, I don't know what y'all doing in that building. But folks calling me about y'all. Can you stop it? Why we can't have, look at somebody say, why we can't have church? The God, I mean, Greg Abbott said we can. He's the, ain't he the governor? Didn't they tell us to come back in here? We made a deal with them. They said, you ain't got to, we don't have social, we don't have to do nothing. We just, just, just get out, just get out from outside and get in there. I don't care what y'all do once the doors is closed. They don't bother us at all. But church folks, supposed to be saved, trying to stop the church. Oh, mm. I want to, oh, you got to stand before God and give an account for that. Amen. You got to stand. What you going to tell God? God going to say, why you trying to stop the church? And that's my church. Ooh, I don't want that on my hands. Why are Christians putting their faith in the government, election, the vaccine, and the news media? Why are Christians sitting up watching the news? Can I, can I say that again so you're not going to get many amen? What are Christians doing sitting up watching lies? You're supposed to have Holy Ghost discernment 
to tell you that all this stuff is programmed and they are feeding you a narrative. The Holy Ghost haven't told you that yet? I'm talking about the same Holy Ghost that have you speaking in tongues and float, floating in the room. Cause you to fly into the drums and knock over all the sound equipment. That Holy Ghost. The, you know, the Holy Ghost power wake you up in the middle of the night. And you going off in tongues. That Holy Ghost power. That Holy Ghost power hasn't spoke to you and told you that the news is rigged toward a narrative that's a part of the new world order. They all program. The Holy Ghost didn't tell you that. Holy Ghost didn't tell you that they are putting the spirit of fear in you. Did the Holy Ghost tell you to not be afraid? The Holy Ghost tells me to not be afraid. The Holy Ghost tells me to keep going. The Holy Ghost tells me that as long as he is with me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's what the Holy Ghost speaks to me. You gonna wait till the end times to punk out? All that power you had, oh, I prayed, and the robber pulled his gun out and shot, and I was just dodging bullets like Neo. All of them testimonies. All of them testimonies. You can't dodge COVID like that? Oh. All them testimonies, Elder. All of them testimonies. Folk calling me from all over the world. I'm booking flights now. I want to come to your church. I want to come because y'all are still me. Come on. You welcome. Amen. Amen. Had somebody tell me the other day, uh, Brother, you know, I read online that y'all don't let people come in y'all's church. It's just, it's closed. It's only for... First of all, get offline. If you can't handle lies and malicious content, you need to just disable your account. Like, ain't nobody mad at me for preaching the truth. You need to disable your account. Because folks is upset. Amen. But outdoors been a. I, some of y'all came in here because of the outdoor service. Say, yeah. Was p just pull it up. Nobody asks you no questions. Oh, brother, you know, I. I, I need some information. No, you coming in fellowship if you got the power of God in you. If you got the spirit of the Lord, you are welcome. Amen. You know, closed church. What is a closed church anyway? Oh, only certain people can go. What? Amen. But they now believe the news and the social media more than the unction of the Holy Ghost. And his leading. Believe the news and the media more than the unction of the Holy Ghost. I watch the news so I can know what to pray for. You know what? Why don't you read the good news of the gospel? That'll give you what to pray for. Or that'll empower you so you can pray for somebody. I told y'all this message was long. Why are our young people turning to witchcraft instead of the Bible? What happened in 2020? I mean, witchcraft galore. All these young folks. The burning sage. Meditating. Doing yoga. All of this new age witchcraft. Why is the Bible being questioned now and everything a preacher says is debated and countered by YouTube information? As if Google don't own YouTube. We about to find out. Hey, man, we're going to deal with all of this. Hey, man, in 2020, folks are believe, were believing lies. Strong delusions spread through the news media and social media. People chose to live unhealthy and eat voraciously. They didn't consider what the foods, drinks, lack of sleep, and exercise was doing to them. For years, church folks were the most unhealthy folks. Y'all don't think that was a setup? I shot a video years ago called Pharmacos. Remember that video? And I told y'all I was unhealthy. 
out there trying to fight the devil unhealthy. And the devil almost killed me. Wasn't nothing right. My mind, my body, nothing. Because I wasn't paying attention to it. And God had to deal with me and say, man, if you're going to fight for me, you got to be healthy. You got to be smart. And you got to eat right. You got to live right. Amen. But the church wasn't doing none of those. They live in fire, living in sin. Gluttonous. Amen. It didn't matter. They didn't care about health. Amen. They didn't care. Nobody cared what they was eating. Nothing. Until they got sick. Then it's time to pray. Time to pray when you get sick. But did nobody care. And so it was a setup. The devil was setting us up. Well, setting the church up. Oh, but we've been preaching it for years in here. Amen. If you pay attention, you would have heard it. Once this flu season hit, people became fearful because of their underlying health issues. So it's not COVID that they're afraid of. And ain't nobody dying of COVID. They die of COVID-related stuff. That's what they say. COVID-related. Those are underlying health conditions that compromise your immune system so you couldn't fight the seasonal flu off. That's all it is. Because you was unhealthy. A healthy immune system can fight off the cold and the flu. Anybody ever had a cold? Anybody ever had the flu? Amen. You lived through it and you okay now, right? Right? You know why? Because you have an immune system that fought for you. And the healthier it was, the easier it was for you to get through what you had. But if you have lived your life not considering your diet or your obesity or your health risk factors, then your immune system will struggle to keep you alive. Can I keep preaching? Especially with what they got going on out there now. These waves, y'all, these electromagnetic waves, I'm telling you, this stuff is real. It's strong. That 5G in your phone, that stuff is strong. The presence of electromagnetic millimeter waves and chemical rain. Did we forget about the chemtrails? Whenever they talk about alien activity and talk about things happening in the sky, they come out there and cover the sky up. You didn't notice? Boy, during the winter solstice, they was the chemtrail. They were covered. They were spraying so much stuff in the sky. I was like, now, wait a minute. There's too many planes at once. Like, what you covering up? Oh. Spaceships. I don't know what they're covering up. But it's chemical rain from that. Because whatever they're shooting in the sky is coming down in the rain. Which goes in our water supply, which goes everywhere. It gets on our bodies. Amen? And if there's chemicals, then our body is fighting not only the millimeter waves from the 5G and all that stuff and the Wi-Fi in your house and all those things. Amen? Quit sleep with the phone next to you. Put that phone somewhere else. Amen. 4G is not good for you in the middle of the night. It'll mess with your sleep. It'll give you insomnia. A lot of people solve their insomnia by just by putting their phone in another room. Some people have to shut their Wi-Fi off at night. Can I preach in here? Boy, I'm teaching y'all something. But the presence of these things, Millimeter waves and chemical rain in the atmosphere makes it hard for our bodies to fight against illnesses with a bad diet and pre-existing health conditions. Amen. The media never advocates for healthy eating or sleeping habits. Never. You'll never see a commercial telling you to boost your immune system and your immune system can fight off colds. And if you would eat right and sleep, sleep better, you would be more healthy and you can fight what is out there. You don't see that commercial. They're going to tell you to get the vaccine and eat some chips. They got videos with chips talking, singing, everything. Dancing chips. <laughs> the media never advocates for healthy eating or sleeping habits. They push new age remedies. So instead of you eating and sleeping, just meditate. Meditating ain't gonna help you sleep either. Most folks that do all that meditating and yoga have insomnia. It's because the demons they summon messing with them all night long. Because that's all you're doing is summoning demons. That's why you're getting into shapes with the yoga. You're summoning demons, spirits. That's what it was created for. Ask Shiva and Kali where it came from. 
I mean, amen. Boy, I do a truth behind hip hop, but amen. The, new, the, the media never advocates for healthy eating or sleeping. They just push the new age remedies that only pacify you and not address the issue. First Corinthians 3 and 17. And I asked these folks, I said, okay, so you into that witchcraft. So you got that, you doing that yoga? Yeah, I do a yoga every morning. It just clears my mind. And then I meditate. Oh, yeah. And then I, I, I light the candles. See, I light candles. Then I burn the sage to cleanse. You know, it cleanses the atmosphere. And then I just, oh, okay. Well, then why you still got so many problems? Like, your life is trash. You hate yourself. I mean, if I'm going to do all of that, burning sage and light, I've been, man, my life ought to be blissful. Like, I should have no problems. I mean, if I'm going to stretch my body like that and do the rising camel and the, the, the crouching grasshopper, if I'm going to do all of those, I need things to be good. Your life is trash. Squatting donkey. What's all them old shapes they be doing? They got weird names all this. And you in there doing all of them. Oh, it's going to. It's going to. What is it doing? Your life is horrible. Well, I guess I'll go get another tattoo. I mean, I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm preaching in here, Jack. See, if the church had preached these messages, some of these folks would know what they're doing when they're doing it. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3 and 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God do what? Destroy. For the temple of God is what? Holy. Which temple what? Ye are. Well, I mean, can, can Christians smoke? Yeah, you can smoke. Wait till I start my car up and get behind it and suck on that muffler. If you just want some smoke in your body. Why would you want smoke in your Smoke? They put a muffler on the car to get the smoke out of the engine. Because if the smoke stays in the engine, the engine will be corrupted and stop working. Because smoke is toxic. It's not good for the engine. So they put a catalytic converter down, down to a muffler to blow that junk out because it's not good for the car. So how are you putting it in your body and it's good for your body? Is it good for your temple? No, you can't smoke and be a Christian. Ask the Holy Ghost. You foolish. All you got to do is ask the Holy Ghost, why am I smoking? Then you can deal with the problem. It's not a natural act. You're doing that in a sub to substitute for something else. Something else is wrong with you. You can't do whatever you want with your body. The body says that it, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if you mess it up, God's going to destroy it. Amen. Oh, pastor, it's just demons be just... They just talking to me. I just, I hear voices. These voices keep talking. You smoking weed, ain't you? I mean, you know, you know. I can look at your lips and tell you smoking weed. But lips black. You smoking weed. You smoking something. You smoking weed. Oh, so you're opening yourself up. You're smoking a hallucinogen, which is disconnecting your guardian from your psyche, meaning it's opening you up with no protection. That means your moral code can't protect you from what's getting in you. And you gonna tell me about some demons whispering in your ear? Brother, you doing a ritual. Yeah, this is, see, that's why they don't want us in here. They be trying to take us out of here because, amen. When they feeling bad, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta hit it, hit, hit one of them just, bro, you know, just every now and then. Okay, uh-huh, every now and then. Get a head full of demons, then come in here and want me to deal with them. I ain't dealing with your smoking demons. Stop smoking. I smelt you before you hit the door. Pastor, yeah. so can you pray for me? Man, I'm, I get cancer if I stand here and talk to you. Can you go a week and come back?
meditation. Well, folks, in 2020, this is, this is it, y'all. Itch and ears. Y'all see the pictures. Y'all already know where this is going. Because black folks got this the worst. This witchcraft and stuff. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Black queens and goddesses and comedic, the comedic queens and the goddesses and the, oh, the kings, old kings with no jobs and they ain't paying their child support. What you king of, bro? Cool filter kings. You can't even afford those. Demon. I'm a king, old oh king. How you doing, king? Hey, queen. Just the queen's comedic. Kemet. Foolishness. Meditation, yoga, and other idolatrous worship methods are used to cover up real emotional and mental trauma. Real issues are not addressed because social media is promoting bad choices and what? Remedies constantly. And they know what you're talking about. They turn that microphone on on your phone and hear you. And soon as you say it, they come up with some demonic remedies at your weakest point. Real issues are not addressed because social media is promoting bad choices. Because the church neglected, oh gosh, to teach against the new age spirits. Many have adopted them and now they have merged idolatry with their knowledge of God. They have mixed racism and respect of persons with religion to form belief systems that do not agree with the written word of God. Now can anybody be saved? Well, you know, <laughs> bruh, do you have white in you? Yeah. What color was King Agrippa when Paul witnessed to him? And he said, you trying to convert me? I'm a Greek pagan. You worried about color? Bro, will you go forgive your daddy? That's the problem. All you got to do is just forgive him in your heart. That's the only reason you need that. Be recognized for the color of your skin. We got all kinds of colors of skin in here, and are they all going to heaven? The, the ones that are saved. Amen. 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 And have your skin color, if you, you amen. You got to be saved now. But it don't matter. We don't do that junk. Don't come telling me about no Negro land and all that old foolishness, that lying junk you done found on the internet. Didn't use no discernment. Find it in the word for it to be truth. God said he has no respect of persons. Jesus died for all mankind. Every creature that is walking. The Bible said the day will come. That men will call upon the name that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What no stipulation for color and race in that? Look at somebody and say whosoever. And why are you trying to close the door on folks? I want the door as wide open as possible so I can get off in there. What's wrong with you? Trying to shrink the size of the door. Oh, that group can't go in because of all the oppression they caused. Oh, yeah, well, who enslaved God's people in Egypt? What color were they? The ones that God did the nine plagues on. What color was they? Wasn't they some black, dark Negroes that got the frogs and the blood and the firstborn? Talking about enslavement, you crazy. He brought us over here on them ships and they gonna pay for that. Yeah, but the Negroes sold us to them. Yeah. Your ancestors that you praying for and burning the sage for and doing the meditation to, they the ones sold you over here. Sold you out. One way ticket out of Negro land. <laughs> foolishness they found all this stuff on YouTube now all of a sudden it's knowledge all of a
of a sudden it's valid. Africans trying to get out of Africa. You trying to go back. Where you going? What city? Act like Africa is just a, a, a shopping center or something. I'm going to Africa. Where you going, boy? That's the biggest continent in the world. Go be with my people, the ancestors, my, my ancestors and my mind. You can't get along with your uncles and aunties. You can't get along with your mother and father. How you going to go over to Africa? They're going to send you right back. They have even proof text their beliefs to the point that they pick and choose which parts of the Bible they will believe. Many have abandoned the word altogether, believing it is written by white men and slave owners. This year, the hatred for the truth of the word has spread throughout our world more than ever before. That's the problem. They hate the truth of the word, so they want to mess with the validity of it. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 and 3, for the time is coming where people will not endure sound doctrines, but having, this is the ESV version to break it down a little more for you, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into what? YouTube. Wander off into YouTube, getting a head full of foolishness. Amen. Brother, why are you carrying that dead eagle around? Well, did you know that our ancestors, they used to use the eagle. The Bible said we would mount up with wings like an eagle, so I'm just carrying this one. It's dead, bro. I don't want them wings. You stupid. Just state whatever they see on YouTube, they believe it. And then send it to me. Oh, pastor, you know what you think about this. I'm not watching that. First of all, it's a two hours long. I ain't watch it. I ain't got that kind of time. And you send it, brother. It better be 30 seconds. And you, I better know you well. Instead of just watching a bunch of random videos. Man, I protect myself. I protect my spirit. I guard my heart. I guard my mind. I don't need nobody putting a bunch of foolishness in me. Twenty twenty, the spirit of fear ran rampant. <laughs> it wasn't no coincidence that I did the spirit of fear series in twenty nineteen, right before. Look at somebody and say, "God is moving at ABC." Man, you think folks would be, you think they wouldn't be this crazy and mad. You got to know that the power of God is doing something in here. Many that name the name of Jesus bought into the societal charade of COVID-19 and feared gathering and fellowship. We are empowered by the presence of God when we join together. There is power in numbers, but there is no power in fear. The world was able to shut down most churches and have them afraid to worship together. Even when the bands were lifted, most churches elected to stay online. The faith of God's people was tested and many failed. Many with severe church hurt issues became enemies of gatherings and began to lash out against pastors, members, and those who would dare to meet during this false pandemic. The church are the policemen. Those with personal vendettas against authority. See, because if you blew it, blew it with your father, you blew it with your, you know, you're going to have a personal vendetta against all forms of authority. You're going to have authority issues where you can't respect authority. And when you can't respect godly authority, there's no hope for you. You're not going straight to God and skipping over those he's called. Up, oh, look, see. The Bible says, submit to those that have rule over you.
The devil knows there is power in the gathering of the saints. How many of you know there's power in the gathering of the saints? There must be for them to try to stop it. Worldwide? You're going to shut the church down and keep the strip club open? There must be power in the gathering of the saints. The devil knows there's power in the gathering of the saints and tried everything he could to stop believers from coming together to worship, pray fast, and receive God's word. Hebrew 10 and 24. The Bible said, look at somebody say the Bible says. Look at somebody say Hebrews 10 and 24. Look at some, you, Hebrews 10 and 24. The, look at somebody say the Bible said this. The Bible said this. Hebrews 10 and 24, and let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting, ESV version again, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. So even back then, some were neglecting to do what? Do what? They didn't want to meet together because they didn't want authority or to be responsible to anyone. They didn't want accountability. Back then. When this was written by the Hebrew writer. So he says, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as ye see what? Do we see the day drawing near? That means all the more we should be gathering. Look at somebody said the Bible just said that. I'm not listening to somebody with a new philosophy on what's going on with the church. and The, the Bible just told me that Amen. as the day approaches. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just don't need a mama when I get married. When I get married, I'm not marrying a mama. You, ain't got, you don't have to clap. Some folk can't clap. Conviction got it. They were standing over their man before he even came to church today. Standing over him. In his ear. I, I grew up with a mama. And my mama's pretty tough. I'm, I, amen. My mama let my mama be my mama, but I'm not marrying my mama. I don't need nobody yelling at me. Some folks scared the amen. They scared. They scared. You scared of your wife, boy, something is wrong. You can't go to heaven. You can't. You ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it in. When you walk up to the pearly gates, God going to say, now where's your man card? Who took it? Who took your man card? Let me go find my wife, Lord. Hold on. It's in her purse. <laughs> Instead of men standing up and leading their homes, more and more men were quitting in 2020 on their own hope. They quit on their hope of being a provider, a protector, and priest of their home. Just quit. Quit on their homes. Quit on their family. They were refusing to marry. Old dudes just not going to get married. Gamma phobia. Afraid. 40, 50. Bruh! Refusing to marry. They, are ab they were abandoning their homes. They were gravitating to women who will lead and protect them. They want a mama. I need a woman that's going to protect me. Just stay with your mama. You live with her anyway. <laughs> Why you want to leave her at 50? Stay with her. It's almost over, bro. You coming down the other side of the mountain. Just stay with your mama, man.
they fear being a strong man because they never saw it growing up. Amen. Their father wasn't in the home or their father was in the home getting yelled at like this. Looking at them. You don't be looking at your kids. There's some women getting convicted. Hey, they see themselves in here, man. If you change that hair from blonde to kinky, that's me. They fear being a strong man because they never saw it growing up. The saddest part is that their emotions are manipulated by women and they are controlled by Jezebel spirits. You know, women, see, I told y'all, you got to get the truth behind the hip hop. You got to watch part three. Boy, was it broken down in part 13? I mean it. The women, they target men that are downtrodden with no confidence, that grew up without seeing strong men. They target those men because they know they can use that male energy. God don't give women male energy. God don't get women, give women male authority. <laughs> they have to take it from a man, and they have to use it through a man. Boy, if I could tell you how many text messages and emails I get from men's accounts, but it ain't the man that's writing it. <laughs> yeah, oh, pastor, we leaving the church because, see, you this and that and this. Brother, this don't sound like no man. I know who's typing this. <laughs> Whose hand is up your back? You just a dummy. A ventriloquist dummy. On Facebook Live and see and see and see and I thought that, 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 that. And there's a hand just... They have to use the male energy. Man, I told you, I'm a priest today. Shoot. Women use their authority to fight against God's plan. They use the man's authority to fight against God's plan for mankind. Women are lifted up while men are labeled toxic if they stand strong. Luke 11 and 21, when a strong man armed. Did the Bible say strong man? What kind of man? Strong. What kind of man? Is that toxic? A to is he toxic because he's strong? A strong man. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, what happens? His goods are what? Did it say when a strong woman? What about a woman armed with the man's energy? No, it says a strong man armed keepeth his palace. His goods are in peace. Now, I'm going to briefly cover this because I have two videos. Jezebel's Finest Hour and the last one we just did this year, Jezebel's Last Stand. If you want to know what's going on with the Jezebel spirit, amen? Amen. Society has done a job on our young ladies. How many of y'all know that? Amen. These men, oh, these young men that want a good woman, boy, they got to sift through all kind of hoochies and scraggly, Skanches to find a good woman. I mean, as soon as they're old enough to show their body, they on Instagram showing it. Telling all their business. Just, I mean, and then they gotta burn sage and put the witch. They just, I mean. But there's a reason why. The church! Look at somebody and say the church. The church neglected to teach them according to scripture. Uh -huh. Instead, the church needed their financial contributions. The church needed women's financial contributions so they could build the dream church. They can build the mansion church. They can build the kingdom. So they needed the female's financial contributions. So what does that cause you to do? Push the female to financial success. The church did that. Instead, the church needed their financial contributions, so they pushed out, uh, they were pushed out of the role of nurturing to careers and pseudo-parenting. Without the hope of marriage, 
They haphazardly connect with men and do what? Have children without true commitment. The women divorce men more than men divorce women. They neglect their God-given purpose only to find themselves struggling with disease, cancers, tumors, masses, and all kinds of reproductive and emotional disorders. Society lied. Many church leaders lied. Our world has duped women to follow the evil plan of the serpent in the garden. Lord, help. Titus 2, 3 and 4 tells you what the older women are supposed to do. They're not supposed to be pastoring. They ain't supposed to be uh, teaching men and laying hands on men and knocking men out under the power. No, God tells you exactly what you're supposed to be doing as an aged woman in the Bible. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming what? So first of all, you got to be holy for you t before you go to teaching it. It's more than a dress and no makeup. You talking about everybody, got your mouth on everything, telling everybody's business in a dress with no makeup. I don't care how crusty you look, you still got to act right. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Not false accusers, shut up if you wasn't there. Not giving too much wine, quit all that drinking. Taking communion every night. Teachers of good things. Teachers of what? Good things. That they may teach who? Men. That they may teach the men. Does the Bible say they need to teach the men? Is there any occasion in the Bible where God used the women to teach the men? No. Oh, what about Deborah? Get the first Jezebel video. Good gracious. God didn't call Deborah. She called herself. It's in the Bible. That they may teach the young women to what? Be sober and to do what? Love their bosses? Love their careers? Love their jobs? Love their what? Husbands. See, somebody got a problem with that. Oh, there you go. See, I, I read on the internet. I saw online. That you that you a chauvinist and you I'm a male chauvinist. Really, really? You think I believe that women can't work? Some of y'all better work. All that debt you accumulated, you better pay that off. That's not fair for you to put that on a man. Hey Amen. Get the working and paying. I don't have a problem with a woman working. Just don't neglect the kids in the process. Hey Amen. Don't put your hopes and dreams before your children growing up. That's the problem I have. You leaving the kids on somebody else. That's the problem I have. Women, he got to, he don't believe women. I got a female doctor and a female dentist. Now don't be in there. Oh, you need to, no, don't you touch me with that stethoscope. Mm -mm, you need to be home with your hook. Boss, you better work. A doctor, you better, I know you got loans. <laughs> Take my blood pressure. I'm going to help you out. People crazy. They just be making up stuff so folks don't want to come to ABC. Man, it's balanced. Look at somebody say, it's balanced in here. It's balanced in here. I ain't never came to no one here. You need to quit your job. I got like, about God said. I ain't gonna tell you that. Because the first thing you're gonna say at the first of the month, uh, Pastor, can the church help us out? No, you no. Work that job. Now you run your house like you need to run your house. Everybody's circumstance is different. Amen. If you are blessed to homeschool and teach your kids and those kind of things, God bless you. But man, if you spent 10 years in school, <laughs> some things going to just have to wait. Junior might be 15 before you can homeschool him. I'm going to get these last two years in. Can I tell the truth in here? Yeah. Amen. Aren't y'all glad it's balanced in here? Yeah. Amen. We don't have ideal situations because most of us grew up in dysfunction anyway. We're just trying to put some pieces together. Yeah. My puzzle don't have that piece. Yeah. 
that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. You got to love your children more than a career. And make whatever sacrifices are necessary for your children. But it see, it take older women to teach that to the younger women. They in there trying to teach the men. But they're not trying to teach the men. They're trying to use the male energy. Get the video. To be discreet, chase, keep yourself. Discreet, keep your business. Hey Amen. Let a man figure you out. Don't nobody want to date you because they see all your business online. They already knew everything. I don't want to date her. I know what she's thinking every morning. Oh, today's going to be a tough day. Oh, today I didn't. Oh, today. Every day. Chase. Keepers where? At work. Keepers at work. Man, you ain't changing the Bible. You can get mad at me all you want, but you're not changing the word. At home. Good. And can you just be good? Teach young women to be good. Good is the opposite of bad. Uh-oh, this one right here. Keep the lights out because some folk going to get up and get out of here on this one. You got to teach the young women to be what? Obedient to who? I got to come from behind. Let me see who's not clapping. Let me get up here. Who's not clapping at the word. Who's not clapping for the word? You're not going to clap for the word? Put your witchcraft hands together. You better put your jazzy hands together and clap. You better clap for the word. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not what? Blaspheme. Obedient to your husband. Even if he crazy. That's what I don't understand. You picked him. You picked a crazy man and then gonna come try to hold him. I don't have to do what he say. You, why you what? But the older women didn't teach it. Dark forces. Yeah, some of y'all got this in you. Been in you. In your house. Yeah, spoke to you. These things sit on websites. Man, somebody sent me a link the other day. I clicked on a link and a witch popped up. And she was doing a spell real quick so she could get it on you real quick. And I thought, you know, I'm clicking, trying to get through the phone. Down. I'm like, wait a minute. Witch? Black woman. Eyes start glowing. Yeah. These folk crazy. TikTok. It was on TikTok. They sent me the link, so I delete TikTok off my phone. That's a, now, that's a devil right there. You need to look at somebody and say, delete TikTok. It, it serves no purpose. No purpose. Somebody sent me another video from TikTok where they were quoting scriptures and, and, and defending homosexuality, defending all, you know, all the worldly stuff with scriptures. But the name of the chapters and the, the name of the books of the Bible aren't in the Bible. So I'm like, now what is this? They said the Bible teaches that Jesus was kind to homosexuals in Sarah 3 and 39. Sarah 3. And in Jundapa 8 and 7. Look at somebody and say, delete TikTok. Go on, your, get your kid's phone that you pay for. Do you pay for it? And delete TikTok off your kid's phone. Go do it now. Let's, no, I'm just playing. Hey, man, they don't need it. Ain't no good in it. It ain't doing no good for nothing. No, there's nothing good. Some stuff just go too far. With men out of place, women are uncovered. This sounds familiar. This sounds like Genesis 6 that I told y'all about, about way back in 2009. Way back in 2009. In the Truth Behind Hip Hop Part 5, I told y'all about the angels coming down. 
and doing this stuff. Well, it's happening again. The men are out of place. Women are uncovered. Fallen angels and spirits come down to influence them. CERN opened up the portal and dark forces came into our atmosphere. Told you about that in 2013 on the video. Pop life. CERN. Because people had already tapped into meditation, yoga, and other new, new age practices, these spirits had plenty of bodies to host them. So as they begin to spin the, 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 the proton accelerator and bring in this dark matter and bring in these beings, these beings was walking around looking to see who they could get into, and they see you in that yoga pose. Cleansing the atmosphere with some smoke. You're going to clean the atmosphere with smoke. Some stuff just. What's wrong with it? Sage is a natural plant. And see, boy, if I ain't making dressing with it, then I don't. I, I, I know it's natural and it tastes real good in dressing. But when you burn it, you are performing a witchcraft ritual that dates back. To ancestral worship. But they'd already tapped into it. The young folks, the Holy Ghost field, saints of God, the Holy Ghost field, fire baptized, saints of God, their kids had tapped into the meditation and the yoga and the new age practices. These spirits had plenty of bodies to host them. Now we are seeing the evil in the hearts of men unfold. Demons have caused men to be weakened by pornography, narcissism, and hopelessness. Those are the three things promoted on the internet. <laughs> pornography, just weakening men. That's what it's there for, to weaken you so you can't stand strong for your family. Narcissism. You know, you can't do nothing with a narcissist. That's a demon-possessed man, a narcissist. And hopelessness, that's what comes when you are into these things. You just, you just feel hopeless. Women are proud to be whores and freaks and internet sluts, showing their bodies, and they don't care. Don't care. I don't care. I ain't worried. I don't think about getting married. Have no care. I don't even care if my kids see it. They use their bodies to tempt and speak all kinds of vulgarities. Nastiest mouths. Women, black women have nastier mouths than anybody. Cussing and talking nasty and crazy and think it's cute. You ever think you'd see a year what a number one song would be by a, a stallion, <laughs> Megan, the, Meg, whatever it is. Yeah. Megan, the stallion, and what's the other one? Cardi B, two internet sluts, strippers, bragging about it, bragging about being whores, proud of it, as if there's no consequences to sleeping around like that. And that's what our nation promotes. Oh, but they're so concerned about your health. They don't want you to get COVID. But you can catch the clap from a video From the video, you got to go to the doctor. From the video. Phone infected. Godly men are rare. And godly women almost what? Matthew 24 and 37. But as the days of Noah were. Hmm. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Summary! The devil took advantage of an opening. The church stopped teaching sound doctrine and catered their message toward prosperity, women empowerment, and carnal living. You just opened it up for the devil. With men not guarding their homes and women striving for societal acceptance, the devil saw an opportunity to launch his final end time plan. Male hatred is his final plight. 
when children hate their fathers, they open themselves up to all kinds of evil. Respect for authority is lost and anarchy is born. But God is still on the throne. And in us, look at somebody say, he's in me. God's power has not diminished. It's the faith of some latter-day believers that has decreased. So don't think it's God. His power is still the power. It's just not in some of these folks. But look at somebody say, God is still all-powerful. He's still the creator of all things. We must not allow the enemy to spoil our goods. We must restore the strong man. We must restore the creation roles. We must set a better example in decision making, healthy lifestyles, and word-based beliefs. As the church, the final remnant, the end time fellowshippers, we must exemplify the victory we have in Jesus. Amen. In this last hour, we must stand strong against the delusion of our world. Show them the power of God is still potent and able to save them from sin. It's time to stand, saints of God. There is little room for error going forward. If we are who he says we are, we must endure until the end. This is Jesus speaking to Thyatira, who had a similar problem. And I believe that it was, a, it was a, a foretelling of the problem we would have in this time. A lot of people like to liken our day to Laodicea. But I liken it to Thyatira because Jezebel is out of control. And Jezebel has ruined many churches. The spirit of Jezebel has ruined many churches and many women. And many men. And I believe that this is the dispensation of Thyatira, our time. And so this was Jesus' address to them. And this is what he told them. After he told them what he was going to do to the Je those that had the Jezebel spirit, those that were allowing the Jezebel spirit and different things, after he told them all the things that he was going to do to them, he spoke to those that were avoiding or not buying into the Jezebel spirit, like us. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm not buying it. I believe God's order is God's order, and I'm going to keep his order until he comes. Amen. Whether it's in my home, wherever it is, I'm keeping God's order. Look at somebody and say, I'm keeping his order because his order works. Folks try to tell you, oh, man, you know, the, the creation role don't work. Look at your family. Shut up. We got examples all in here of it working when it's in order. Look at somebody and say, order works. So those of us that believe in God's order, this is who he's speaking to. Revelation 2 and 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, the doctrine of Jezebel and Balaam, and which have not known the depths of Satan, meaning you haven't bought into those lies and, and gotten under the Jezebel spirit. As they speak, I put upon you none other burden. Meaning God is looking out for you. He sees us, y'all. He sees us trying to do it right. He sees us trying our best to avoid the world's way. He sees us. He hears us praying, asking him for mercy and grace to overcome these worldly spirits. He hears us. He sees us. He said, I will put no other burden on you. That which ye already have, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Look at somebody and say, God is going to avenge us. Even as I received of my father, and I will give him the what? 
going in style. I'm going to give you Jesus. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Unto who? The churches. Everyone stand to your feet. The church is not dead. God is still speaking. Those churches that would dare to stay alive in this hour and fellowship and meet, God is speaking. He's not going to put any other burden upon us, but he's going to favor us in this last hour. Why? Because he hears us praying. He sees us trying to walk this out the right way. So he's with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you for this word. God, we thank you, Lord, for this review, year-end, summary, whatever, of 2020. And as we look back on 2020, Father God, how did we make it? Lord, you brought us through great trials and tribulations, great tests. Father God, when our faith was tested, Father, when the enemy showed himself and tried to pluck us out of the fold, God, you kept us. When the false information came from YouTube videos and the flat earth and the, the Hebrew stuff and just all the different doctrines and philosophies, God, you kept us in your word so that we would keep the foundation that was given to us, that we had been building all of these years. How could we build this foundation with you all these years and turn our backs on it? Father God, we, we're standing at the end of 2020, we're still standing. Father God, after all that the devil has done, after all he tried to do, we're still standing. We are here. Father God, we are gathering. We're fellowshipping. We're doing what your word says. We're doing it by faith, believing that you are with us. We've foregone the way of the enemy, and we choose your way. We choose your way for our homes. We choose your way for our families. And no matter what it looked like in the past, Father God, it's going to look like you going forward. Father God, we speak it right now that even as 2021 approaches, Father God, the good decisions are going to pay off. Father God, the good moves are going to pay off. Father God, the wisely counsel, the wise counsel we receive, it's going to pay off. The respect for the authority that you've given us, even in this house, it's going to pay off. Father God, the way we treat people, the love we have for those that don't love us back, Father God, it's going to pay off. Father God, the prayers that we have for those that have attacked us and tried to destroy us, it's going to pay off. We're going to do things your way no matter what. In this final hour, we're going to be like you want us to be. So, Father, we pray. Come on, get your hands up high. Father God, we pray for grace, for mercy, for strength, for perseverance, for endurance. Father God, we pray for these things so that we can continue to run this race and show love to others. And prepare for your coming. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can give them some praise. Come on, you can give them some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Is he worthy? He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Just lift your hands one more time. Come on. And just give him a praise right now with your lips. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We stand with all confidence knowing that you're going to see us through. We stand, Father God, in your power, believing that your power is still great. We stand in your authority in this last hour. Longing to see you. Longing to be with you. Father God, longing to do things your way. So keep us, God. Keep us safe.
keep us safe. Our faith is in you. Not in the world, it is in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.